Hello there everyone, I am Pepino here, and today I am going to uh, be creating a new world in Dwarf Fortress. Now, Dwarf Fortress um, is one of my favorite games, and uh, I've got a plan here. I plan on playing quite a bit of it, and recording quite a bit of it, and so let's see here. What my plan is going to be is I'm going to create a smaller world with a very short history. Um, and uh, we'll go with, should we go frequent minerals? Yeah, let's go frequent frequent minerals and leave everything else uh, the same. Now, the what this is going to do is it's going to give us five years of simulated history and a very small world. And what this is going to mean is that the history of the world is going to be pretty simple. And we're going to be able to take a look at it and be there from the beginning. Um, we'll probably be founding one of the first dwarf fortresses uh, in the whole world. And if we hopefully play uh, quite a few fortresses in this world, we'll kind of see how the civilizations develop uh, and play a role in that. So. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and create this world. It shouldn't take very long at all. There we go, and that is our world. And we are in the age of Dragon and Tundra Titan. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, let's take a look around. These little uh, horseshoe type shapes here, you can see where my little X is. These horseshoe type shapes are uh, dwarf fortresses, as you see up above the map there. This is the Axe of Sinu, um, and the Problematic Hills, and that is the biomes, the mountains, and the hills here uh, of our world. Now we see we've got uh, these purple things, kind of looks like purple eyes, and then a purple uh, little shape here. Uh, where my X is. These are dark goblin fortresses. Uh, so we've got some dark goblin pits uh, and fortresses forming there along with our dwarves. Now do we have any humans? That's what I want to know. We got some elves up here. Uh, this yellow up in the top right here on this little peninsula. Our elven civilizations and I'm guessing there are humans somewhere. Are they down here? Yes. The opposite end of the map from the elves are the humans. They are down in the bottom down here. Now I'm guessing uh, the Tundra Titan is somewhere up here in the very frozen north of the map. So we could maybe uh, start a fortress up there with hopes of eventually killing the Tundra Titan, and I'm guessing there is a dragon around. So, uh, this seems like a really cool world. I like this. I like this a lot. We can f uh, set out as the uh, third dwarven uh, fortress, or settling, and uh, that should be pretty good. And we've got some goblins here, and I'm thinking we're going to start off sort of close to the goblins. Uh, and that should make our fortress a little more dangerous, but we'll see. We're going to find a good embark in a moment, so we will save that world, and then we will start our game. Before I actually began my fort, I wanted to take a look at uh, some of the uh, legends of the world, the history of the world. So if we take a look at the different civilizations that we have, uh, our, well first we have, uh, yes, our civilization, the Tombs of Rhyming, uh, and let's see, our king's name is Tekud Traded Handle. Fair enough, King Tekud of the Tombs of Rhyming. And let's see, uh, in the year one, we founded Pulley Traded and Coal Brands, which are our two fortresses to date. And uh, if we take a look around, the Armored Jackal is the name of the Goblin Civilization. And uh, the M Momentous Dimensions is the name of our world. 
uh, by the way, because I don't think I mentioned that. The Wraith of Combining is a goblin group. Uh, let's see. The Helpful Nations is a human civilization from the momentous dimensions. Uh, so the humans are called the Helpful Nation. Or Helpful Nations. Uh, and then the elves are called the Rose of Driving. Uh, that's the elven civilization name. So uh, all in all, pretty solid names, uh, I'd say. Let's take a look at some of these other things. We have a kobold collection of outcasts. Um, there's a human religion. The Creed of Tornadoes, centered around the worship of the torches of incinerating, a human goddess of wealth, fortresses, war, and chaos. Fair enough, so that's the human religion. Uh, there's a goblin bandit gang. An elder artifact, um, that's a dwarven group that set out and founded a fortress, I'm guessing. Uh, a human bandit gang, goblin group, a uh, human bandit gang, let's see. It, um, kobold bandit gang, an elven group, and a human collection of outcasts. Alright. Oh, and one more kobold bandit gang. Okay, so that is the civilizations and other entities of our world. Uh, the structures, let's see, what are these? An underworld spire. Um, okay, fair enough. Pause if you want to read about all of these. Uh, and frames of lands was a market in Jade Snake. Uh, market in Strong Soapy. A temple in Strong Soapy. Uh, catacombs in Strong Soapy. A keep in Strong Soapy. And a dungeon in Strong Soapy. Okay. Uh, now, this is the age we are in. The age of the dragon and tundra titan. A time when the dragon Nagab, silvery taxed, and the tundra titan Astuxu were the only great powers in the world. So all of the civilizations right now are basically weak, and the two great powers are these two mega beasts, the dragon and the tundra titan, which it will be the goal of our fortress to kill. Uh, if we can kill them, if we can build up enough wealth to draw their gaze, lure them in, and then our dwarves can actually beat them in a fight, uh, we will hopefully advance the world into the next age and uh, move on from there. So that is the plan, um, but obviously it's much easier said than done. So, uh, basically, yeah, this is just all the history of our world, and again, you can pause and read as much or as little as you would like. Um, I'm just going to scroll down really quickly, and uh, it's, it's a lot for me to read. I'll probably look through it a little bit off camera and just find uh, some interesting stuff out. Um, let's see. I look at this. Here's the map again. Uh, we have the Mute Blizzards up here. The Dim Hills, uh, which is an island or something apparently. The Axe of Sinu is this mountain range. The Hill of Sacrificing. The Passionate Forest. The Sculpted Jungles. The Blanketed Hill. The Jungle of Guards. The Hill of Gulfs. The Hills of Innocence. The Dune of Saturnity. Or Saturninity. Uh, the Problematic Hills, the Matched Jungle, and the Hills of Yawning. Fair enough, that is our world. Um, there is one artifact, and it's a nice slab. Very nice slab. Um, here's our sites again. And here are the historical figures. So, let's take a look. We have our female dragon. Uh, she's the only one of her kind. She's associated with wealth and fire. And uh, she settled in the Hill of Gulfs. 
we should find that and settle near that, maybe. Um, and let's see. In the late winter of three, Nagab became an enemy of the Courteous Society. Um, and then, sounds like a Canadian, like, dwarf thing or something. Uh, the whole, the human, I've, I've got a theory that the human, uh, civilization is, uh, migrated from Canada at some point. The Courteous Society and the Helpful Nations just sound very nice and, uh, pleasant. But let's see, uh, in the late winter of three, Nagab devoured a cow from the Courteous Society. Uh, in the late winter of three, uh, Nagab stole an orca tooth scepter from, uh, the humans, and then, uh, attacked the short gully at Korribud, struck down an elf, um, struck down another elf, and another, and another, and completely destroyed a elven settlement in the year four. Fair enough. So, uh, Nagab completely wiped out some elves and stole a scepter from, uh, someone, I'm assuming humans. Fair enough. Let's see, where is the, uh, Tundra Titan? There it is. Let's see what the Tundra Titan's been up to. Not much. Uh, it's the only one of its kind, a towering one-eyed tick. It has large mandibles and an austerior? I, I, I don't know. Uh, look about it. It's red exoskeleton is warty. Beware its spittle. Um, it's associated with nature and animals. And is wandering the mute blizzards uh, since a time before time, which was five years ago. So, that is that. That's a quick look at our legends, and we will find out where we want to settle next. Okay, after looking around for a while, I think I found uh, a good embark location. Um, it's got some mountains here, if you take a look. Uh, and we are touching a little bit of a river, so we'll have uh, some fishing if we need it, hopefully. Uh, and then, if we look, our neighbors, we are neighbors with everybody, including the goblins who we are at war with. Then, uh, if we look here, we've got some cliffs going on, which I think could be good. So, all in all, looks like a pretty good location. It is temperate, uh, heavily forested, thick vegetation, and wilderness. And we are pretty close to the goblin fortresses. We're about as close as any other civilization. So, I'm guessing we will have them to deal with at some point. Uh, but we'll have to see. Okay, so I have uh, prepared for the journey, and I have named our fortress Bear Midor, which means Earth Power, and uh, we're going to name our group, and uh, we'll just random a few times. Uh, the Remarkable Quakes, that, that sounds good enough, um, so we'll go with that, and uh, basically this... Um, start has given us lots of food, lots of alcohol, and uh, lots and lots of seeds, uh, as long as well as uh, turkeys, dogs, and cats, uh, which will hopefully breed for us, and uh, the turkeys will lay lots of eggs and give us lots of food. So, with that, let's hit E to embark and begin. All right, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Rakust Nanir. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt or plow or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings, ere the cougars get hungry. A new chapter in dwarven history begins here at this place. Bear Midor. Earth power. Strike the earth. 